Hello, Deutsch von Feinart here. Welcome to another mini lecture. Last time we discussed the properties and benefit of titanium, one of our favorite fabrication material. If you missed it, a handy link is in the card as well as the description of this video. This time we'll be drive diving into the Aerobomb, one of our products which have heavily utilized titanium. For a recap, vibration isolation is the minimization of vibration through passive or active methods. In the case of most material, active or intelligent isolation is generated using the machine. Titanium, however, does not require external assistance to isolate or insulate energy. It does it on its own. Here, the black line represents how the vibration energy quickly diminishes on the titanium. This is a great benefit in artery application because it dampens shock, help control and flatten aero flight. Therefore, we at Fina custom designed the main bar of the, our string stop, the arrow bump, with it. Besides the switch from common material like carbon fiber, aluminum or steel to light, corrosion resistant and vibration isolation titanium, we also significantly deviated from popular shape. On the slide is one of our string stop bars. While most on the market are straight or slightly bent, they do little to nothing to mitigate the vibration we discussed in the first slide. Our bar, however, have patented double 91 degree turns, which we call the Z-band. They are mechanically proven to kill any residual energy that was not already minimized by the titanium. To further illustrate, the red line shows how energy travels through across our Z-band shape from left to right. Before continuing, it is important to mention two centers. There are two centers that are relevant to the arrow bump. Consider this bow. We've marked the horizontal center with the gray line of the bow. Of the two options, what do you think is the correct orientation to install the arrow bump? Yes, the top one is correct. It is critical that the arrow bump be swung towards the true center versus away from it. This will allow for the bumper to be most effective since this is where the highest magnitude of play of the string is. Additionally, you should rotate the bumper itself to accommodate for the minor offset from the bowstring vertical center. We'll talk more about this later. There are four primary elements in the basic C-bump string stock system. First, a solid GL2 titanium C-band stop bar a limb saver string stop, a custom, GL2, a custom GL5 titanium hex nut with a long sleeve, and a GL2 titanium in 0 0.2 thick with a 516 spacer. While there are four primary elements, additional accessory will make the food system very adaptable. Currently, Aerobump is offered in four sizes to fit most bowls brace height from 3.5 all the way to 8.5 with about half inch of adjustability each. Further, since our Z-bar are made of GL2 titanium, which have the same relative softness as brass, their thread can be cut down or add to with a simple hacksaw and a die for even further length modifications. Notice how the Z-bar themselves are 516-24 threaded. We did this to remove the necessary of any fastener which is in fact our recommended ideal use. The less fastener, the less weight or chance of vibration exaggerations. Unfortunately, however, not all bows have 21624 thread hole or any thread at all. This series also includes two adapter for such situations. For bows that already have a steel adapter installed with a thread 71620 size hole, we recommend swapping that with our hollow GL5 titanium thread insert adapter. When an outer diameter OD of 716 with an inner diameter OD of 516, this adapter will form a clean, rust-proof mating with an arrow bomb bar. If a machine shop is available to you, we highly recommend this process, if there is only a 3-8-inch hole. As for the bow with an unthreaded 3-8-inch hole, and no machine shop is available, the 3 8 Aluminum collar adapter is also available to make it work. 
Note that it comes in an extra long size for any set screw configurations. Yes, you may want to thread the collar onto the titanium bar, measure what the internal strength is, and cut both to fit your bolt just like the picture we show on the left. We will now go to a hand-on demonstration for the arrow bump. For later references and general preferences, we have also made a separate video for just the demonstration. Link of it in the description below. Hello, this is the hands-on part of the C Bump Miller Lecture. We want to show you exactly how to implement this onto your bow. First of all, you notice on the lecture we talk about having four different sizes and length. The reason for that because see, we try to give you every single bow brace height is so different. So we make different length. Yes, you have to adjust it and give you adjustability on the thread using our collar and our spacer. But a lot of times this can't really work. But so let's do a um, basic format that we currently have a bow with, like a Matthew VXL 20 inch. As you can see, this is the one that come from the bow. Okay, right here. So the first thing we do is to measure how long that is first. As you can see, this is gonna be about six inches, which means that our 5.5, uh, six to six and a half would be perfect for this. And in this case, it will look like this. You can see that. This piece is just exactly what we needed. But unfortunately, as you can see from the original piece, there's no thread on this. So what do we do? We actually make this, which is a 516 to 38 collar adapters. And as you screw this piece in, you put some Loctite to get you the exact length. And after that, you want to measure how far this is. You can see, just like that. Now that's exact. And then you find out this you're going to cut, and you're going to cut it just right here. And this will be our finished product. This is what a finished product looks like. You can see everything is the same length, about the same length all the way through. Now, this piece is a bit lower, just like that. Okay, this is a method for most people could, but what happens if you got, uh, say, you already got a 5, 16 inch hole? Then you really don't need this. You can just go with the original one we have, Put in the thread, lock nut. Put in a spacer for tightening usage. Thread into the 516 hole, adjust it the way you want it, then tighten it. So what happened your 516 holes is not very reliable. Some of them happen to be really short because the nut is only about this long. Well, that's the reason we make this longer version. This is our version made of GL5 titanium. You can see that you can take the original factory out, put this piece in. Now you got a GL2 to GL5 titanium locking system. Yes, I do recommend put some Loctite red on it to make sure this is become part of the bolt permanently. So now you can just adjust this the way you want it. And now you don't have to turn it. You can now tighten the nut from here. And all of a sudden you got it exactly the way you want it. Now remember, the system lets you do it this way too. So you can do just in case your string and your grip is actually not centered, you can offset it. And in case of the Matthew like we just shown, same thing. You can put this piece in. Adjust it. And then turn the bumper to be exactly the way you want. Tighten this two nut, adjust it. Now you got perfect. And it's just like the lecture, we always want to swing our C bump the, bump, the rubber part, the closest to the two center of the bow. This concluded our entire hands-on demonstration with the C bump, how it works on a bow, on a specific bow of your bow. All right? And all the information, more detail of it is on the first part of the lecture. Thank you.